Welcome to Boarding School 360 webinar series. We're so glad to have all of you with us this evening. My name is Katie Garrett and I'm with Garrett Educational Consulting. Um, and over the past year, we have launched Boarding School 360 to serve as a resource for the um, families and students who are navigating boarding school decisions and also wondering about summer programs that are available at the boarding schools. So tonight, we have a rock star group to talk about summer opportunities at boarding schools. Um, I think oftentimes we think of boarding school as kind of operating from September until May, but the reality is there's a lot that goes on on those campuses um, in June, July, and August as well. Um, and so while some of the kids that might go to that specific school may choose to do a summer program at that boarding school, they are also often open to anyone who um, is not a student at that school as well. So um, without further ado, I will quickly introduce our panel and then let each of them introduce themselves. So we have Cardigan Mountain, we have Chatham Hall, uh, Macaulay, and we have Wolfboro. So I'm gonna let each of them introduce themselves and give a brief over overview of their school and then we'll circle back and let them talk about their summer programming. So Cardigan Mountain, I'm gonna let you get start. Good evening, everybody. My name's Chris Langeteague and I am uh, both during the academic year, the director of secondary school counseling, but a lot more fun for me, the associate director of Cardigan summer session each summer. Cardigan Mountain School is a 75 year old junior boarding school for boys, uh, grades six through ninth during the school year. We enroll about 230 students. But during the summer, we morph into a grade third or three through ninth um, co-ed program that brings on 15, uh, pardon me, not 15, 150 students from all over the country and the world to uh, take part in a, in a beautiful campus that's just outside of Hanover, New Hampshire. I look forward to telling you more. Adam, you want to go? Sure, Frankie, if you want, I can go first and then pass it off to you. Um, I am Olivia Judd, or Miss Judd as the girls know me. I work in our enrollment office at Chatham Hall. We are an all-girls boarding school, nearly 95% boarding here in Chatham, Virginia. And I, in addition to working in the enrollment office, I am also a student advisor, as well as our tennis and golf coach. I'll pass it off to Frankie. Yeah, I am the um, interim director of riding here. So we have a big riding program. The school owns about 30 horses. Um, we have a different number of girls riding kind of during throughout the year. Um, and then I um, run the summer riding program as well. Thank you, Macaulay. Hey, my name is uh, Mike Wood. I'm director of summer programs at Macaulay School. Macaulay is an all boy uh, day and boarding school located in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And uh, we have a very uh, robust summer program with a number of different uh, boarding options available. And I'm excited to share more information. All right, Pat with Wolf. Um, hi, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Pat McInerney. I'm the head of school at the Wolfboro Camp School. And contrary to the other people on the program, we are just a summer program. Um, we've been around since 1910. Um, many of you may not know we were founded by the Hill School in Pennsylvania, um, but we've been unassociated with them for the last 30 years. Uh, we were founded in 1910 and we are a summer program which combines um, a morning of academics and an afternoon of a pure camp on a beautiful lake in New Hampshire. So I look forward to giving you more details. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Um, I'm excited for everyone to learn more about each of your programs. Um, and so we will start with um, Cardigan Mountain. Um, and I just want to let everyone know if there's any questions along the way, feel free to um, you know, put them in the chat box um, and we'll answer those as we go. And most certainly at the end um, of everyone presenting as well. Great, thanks so much. I'm gonna share some pictures and get rolling. And I, I think one of the things about which we're proudest right now, uh, and hopefully this is showing, is, uh, is the fact that we are open and we're having a terrific year on campus despite all the things that we've faced as a country and as, as a world, to be honest. Uh, the fact that we can bring students, faculty members and the community back together, albeit in a different uh, set of circumstances than usual, means that we're able to celebrate 
uh, the collaborative work that we do. And, and we're really able to pursue the core values that we think make our program unique. Now, whether it's with the boys during the school year or in the co-ed environment during the summer, the cornerstone of what we do are focused on compassion, integrity, respect, and courage. And there are ways that we inform what we do to help students better understand themselves as learners and community members, but also to build relationships uh, throughout the community that we hope will carry on with them when they return home. Um, this year, we're modifying our program. In traditional years, we would do either a full six-week program or two three-week, but we're focusing on a one all-in four-week program that's going to run through predominantly the month of July. Uh, you get a look here at the waterfront here on Canaan Street Lake, which is a beautiful lake that's not too deep, which means it's not too cold, despite being up here in the mountains of New Hampshire. Now, we're going to talk about all the different things that we can do here in New Hampshire and at Cardigan, but it's important to note that the lake is a focal point, much like a lot of uh, programs that are summer camps, not just academic programs each year. We do have a swimming requirement that, uh, that makes it fun. It makes it a gathering point for everybody, whether they're advanced or just beginning. In terms of academics, it's important to clarify that we are focused on enrichment. And that allows us to meet students where they are and hopefully allow not only a link to continued learning, especially at a time where learning has been interrupted in so many ways, but also to bolster interests in different areas. And there are numerous fantastic programs in which our students take part. Now, I'm not only administrator in the program, I also have an 11 year old son who's been participating since second grade. And in that time, he's begun with courses that range from penmanship and organization for the little guys all the way up to things like building rockets and doing a CSI program that allows you to investigate different murder mysteries um, founded on, uh, of course, fictitious scenarios that involve the faculty. Uh, we offer French, Chinese, Latin, Spanish, SSAT preparation, interview skills, Toastmasters, and you name it. But again, this is just a component like Wolfboro that's in the morning. We think it's really important that we're developing these skills and maintaining a love for learning but we also recognize that learning extends beyond the classrooms. And that's where things really get exciting at Cardigan. Summertime fun is of course at the center of everything. We want kids to learn, uh, but sometimes it's difficult to trick a kid into thinking that it's learning that they're doing in the classroom, but everywhere else. And I, I said trick them into, I guess that's the wrong way to put it. Sometimes it's difficult to convince a child that going away to live at a school for four weeks where they will in fact be studying five, six days a week is worthwhile, but again, it's a small component. Uh, we gather in so many different ways and experience so many things in the summer that allow us to build community, uh, both on the dorm floors, which are, are built around age and gender, but also in so many different capacities. And in the afternoon, we open up into programs that revolve around first the Do Good program, which is uh, a dorm-based activity where we do things as simple as roommate contracts and dorm standards to establish a sense of home and we versus I'm different and you're different, but also then we extend into fantastic traditional boarding school outlets like lacrosse, flag football, uh, soccer, you name it, but also canoeing, kayaking and sailing, taking advantage of our fantastic uh, environmental uh, opportunities surrounding us. Now, community I've mentioned again and again and you can see here um, a couple of years ago when our, our staff shirts were actually Hawaiian shirts, a group gathering on the hillside outside of Clark Morgan, the uh, first building on campus. Now we are working on ways to bring the community together, but let's face it, it's going to look a little bit different than kids bunched together on the hillsides. Um, we're figuring out ways to bring people in and we've had a great deal of success in how we've organized our program on campus during the school year as a blueprint to enable us to gather and be safe and make sure the kids are challenging themselves and building relationships, but also more importantly, learning. And while things might look a little bit different, we won't be bunched up like you see here. The important pieces that will be present are going to tie to the fact that we're still working on kids being together. We're working on kids building relationships with each other from diverse backgrounds, but also we're building trusting relationships based on equity, listening and understanding between the faculty and the students. There's so much that can be learned in environments like ours, not just Cardigan, but at Wolfboro, Macaulay and Chatham Hall. 
because we prioritize community and we want kids to have an opportunity to take ownership of the learning, but also to, to be sure that they're carrying these skills home and perhaps looking into something like a cardigan, like these other schools in the future. It's always gratifying for me when I hear from students as they come up through the ranks and they look to apply to boarding schools for secondary school, or of course, enroll at Cardigan too, because it means we're making a difference. This is a glimpse of what it's like to be at these unique schools, these niche opportunities that you don't always know about that can really have lifelong impacts. My three years in boarding school as a high school student have informed my entire career. And now I'm able to provide the same opportunities for my children. And I think that frankly, regardless of which program you look at, there are fantastic ways to explore a country, explore a culture and look for opportunities to learn. Now, I'm gonna turn off the screen share, but I wanted to give you a glimpse of what our waterfront does look like when it's quiet, because it's rarely quiet during the summer. And while my sons and I really enjoyed swimming two, three times a day throughout the summer this past year, it's not the same as when we've got the boys and girls here jumping in, doing things like the polar bear plunge. Now, it's certainly quick. Um, and of course, there's so many things I could share with you to, to help you understand cardigan. But I think more than anything, it's the fact that we, the teachers in this program, keep coming back despite the busyness of our lives, despite the stresses. And, and I'm already helping build a great core faculty because the ways that we're able to connect with your children, make all the hard work, the around the clock things we do, because the faculty, they truly are triple threat. They're in the classroom, they're in the dorm, they're running activities, they're checking in, they're fielding phone calls from you in the dorm floor. If little Tommy, who's only nine, is homesick, and I do quite a bit of that too, but it's something that's meaningful and it resonates with all of us. Um, Cardigan and programs like ours, we really are what we are when we're full and when we've got our students on campus. And we didn't have that last year. And we're really excited to welcome you back. So I encourage you to reach out to our program through the website, which I know will be shared. And I look forward to answering any questions that you might have over the course of this evening. Thank you, Chris. That was great. Um, okay, Chatham Hall. Olivia, I think you said you were gonna start. Yeah, yeah so I will share our first two camps. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so you can see here that we have three main areas that we offer camps at Chatham Hall. So we, Frankie will speak a little bit um, towards the end about our writing programs that we have here. We also do have a science investigators camp, which I will touch on as well as our girls make it happen camp. And you can see here that there, there's some overlap between some of the camps. We do have campers who stay for multiple weeks and we our camps, they run Sundays through Fridays, and we are able to house the students on the weekend should you choose to stay. For example, if you want to go to a writing session and then go to Girls Make It Happen, that is definitely an option. We also do provide transportation to and from airports should campers need it. I always start by sharing this video, which I love. This is just kind of a brief snapshot of what our camps are like. Um, this is on Chatham Hall's Vimeo page. Me. See if it'll load. All right. So again, just a very brief snapshot. We featured all of our camps in that video. The first one that I will speak on is our Girls Make It Happen camp, which is truly an extension of this program that we have here. It is called Girls Day. It is a day in which we don't have classes on campus. It is dedicated to workshops and these workshops are entirely run by all of our students. So they put on workshops for their classmates in areas that they are truly passionate about. We have had girls do everything from soap making to um, 
the history of architecture in their countries. Baking is always a popular one. So with this camp geared toward younger students, more middle school age, it is an extension of that day in which we walk students through pretty much a week of workshops. We are fortunate to have faculty come from such a wide variety of areas and have such a wide variety of experiences and areas of expertise. So we will offer everything from gardening, floral arranging, public speaking, laser printing. Um, you could see here the grocery shopping on a budget and the baking day is really fun. We teach the girls how to, you know, really learn these very important life skills that they may use not only during this camp, but life beyond that. So learning how to create a grocery list, shop on a budget and create a really nutritious meal. I personally love leading the public speaking session. And as these students go through the week and they go through these workshops, we also work with them to create their own workshop, almost like their own TED talk that they then give to the other campers at the end of the week. And it could be anything that they may be interested in. We are fortunate to have a number of our Chatham Hall alumni come back and serve as camp counselors for this camp, as well as all of our camps. So they too will lead sessions. And again, this, this camp is all about important life skills and really developing your own leadership style as well. So we will have a number of school leaders in our community come speak to the speak to the girls, including our head of school. They'll have a chance to chat with her about her experience being a female role model and leader. Next is our science investigators camp. And I love this camp because it, it sounds similar to one of the activities at Cardigan Mountain in which the girls, they get to solve a murder mystery throughout the week. And they, really work in so many areas, biology, chemistry, you name it. And we are also exploring areas such as using our makerspace, just to you know, mix things up a bit. We have recently redone our makerspace. So this, the students or the campers rather will have the opportunity to learn some laser printing in there. And so they will spend the mornings working in these sessions, solving their mock crime. And then in the evenings, all of the camps will gather together for fun evening activities. We have, um, you know, tie dyeing, a snow cone machine, um, popcorn machine, all sorts of fun lawn games here on campus. And that's a fun time to not only bond with the campers within your cohort, but also those campers in the other sessions as well. Next, I'll pass it off to Frankie. She'll talk about riding. Yes, yeah, so we have um, two weeks of what we call our regular summer riding program. Um, this riding camp is really geared through to girls who are already comfortable walk trotting and at least starting to canter. So girls who have already done some riding. Um, and our focus is really improving their riding skills and also their horsemanship knowledge outside of the saddle as well. So we spend a lot of time talking about how to care for our horses. Um, most of our campers come and ride the Chatham Hall horses, so there is the option to bring your own horse too, if you would like. Um, the girls ride in two lessons a day um, with faculty members from the Chatham Hall's riding staff. Um, so myself and Emmeline Poole as well. And they also get time to do fun activities down at the barn. Sometimes when it's hot, we'll like paint the horses or give them baths. So they really get to experience both learning and achieving their goals in the saddle, but also some fun with the horses as well. And as Olivia said, the girls will spend most evenings with the other camps that are happening at the same time. So there is the chance to kind of get to know people outside of the riding camp and get to kind of build that sense of community just like we have during the school year. The other camp that we have is our AP Equitation Camp. So this is a camp that's really geared towards girls who really want to improve their skills and their understanding of theory behind riding. And it's for girls who are 14 to 18 um, and it does require an application. So it's a little bit of a more of a snapshot of what our varsity program is during the school year. But the summer riding is a little more open and you're welcome to always email me too if you have questions about it. I know sometimes it can be stressful to send your kid to ride somewhere where you're not familiar. I 
I was on mute, sorry. Um, and you could see here, and we are happy to send this PowerPoint out to any families who should be interested. You are able to click on any of these links. And this one right here, you see that we are offering this virtual campus tour. If you want to get a sense of what our campus is like, I, I truly think, and I think Frankie would say the same, that these camps are all a really great snapshot of life at Chatham Hall, you get to live in the dorm, eat in the dining hall, you get to experience all the fun things without the pressure of classes and slowly ease into boarding school life. And again, get that snapshot of what it's like here. Perfect. Thank you so much, Chatham Hall. That was great. Um, okay, so next up, we are gonna have Mike from Macaulay. Great. All right, thank you. I'm. Uh... Very happy to talk about Macaulay School. Like I said before, Macaulay is an all boys school located in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, we were established over 115 years ago. And really from the first day, we've had a, some, sort of summer, some sort of summer program at Macaulay. Uh, but uh, we now have our flagship program is called Macaulay Sports Camp. And this will be our 42nd summer of Macaulay Sports Camp. It's been wildly popular and successful, especially in the Southeast although we do have boys from around the country and even some international kids who attend the camp. We have three sessions of Macaulay Sports Camp. It's for boys ages nine to 14. And our emphasis is on fun. Uh, we joke about uh, Macaulay is located on Missionary Ridge in Chattanooga and our academic building is up more near the top of the ridge. And we joke about how we don't go near that building during the summer at Macaulay Sports Camp. We stay down where the athletic facility is located and the sports fields are. But we, we like to emphasize, just like these other boarding schools, our advantages over some camps and that we really feel like the people, the place and the program are three key components that separate us from uh, other, other summer camps. Uh, one, the people that we're able to bring to Macaulay, our counselors are Macaulay alumni. I don't have to go to a college and try to hire counselors. If a boy wants to work for me during the summer, it's already someone I know. If I don't know him, I can sit down in the dining hall and talk to the faculty members that have had that boy in class. Uh, most of them are boys who graduated from Macaulay. And then of course our faculty work in the summer as well. And then another huge advantage I think that boarding schools have as a spot for summer camps are the year round employees that work at these schools. Our nurse, the dining hall staff, our maintenance the folks, all those people, our security, our year-round year vetted employees of Macaulay. Um, and I like to share with families, that means if we have a light bulb that's out in the dorm, that's not really something I have to worry about. I just call maintenance and they take care of it, which means that we can put all of our effort and emphasis on taking care of the boys that are entrusted to us during the summer. So the people are what really make our camp, and I know these other programs are the same way, make those uh, programs run and run well and the relationships that you're able to build during the summer. The other part of it is the place and Macaulay is blessed to have incredible facilities. Our athletic center is one of the nicest high school facilities in the country. It has indoor pool, indoor track. Um, it has an incredible weight room. It has a game room that has pool tables, ping pong tables, video games. It's just an amazing and we're certainly fortunate to have that type of facility. It has a varsity film room that we use for our camp meeting place. Uh, we have a turf football field. We have multiple other fields, you know, lacrosse fields. We have three baseball fields. Of course, we have an outdoor track. And then kind of a unique facility that Macaulay has is they have what we call the Macaulay Lake, which was uh, built over 100 years ago. I always joke it's the kind of facility that no school in their right mind would build today. But it has a tower and a water slide. And uh, But it's actually a, a large outdoor pool. We keep it chlorinated and uh, run into the standards of a pool but it's a pretty uh, unique and amazing facility. And it is a, a important part of what we do during the summer. And then the program itself, like I said, Macaulay Sports Camp is our 42nd year. We feel like we've got it figured out now. And uh, we have three sessions to choose from and it's for boys ages nine to 14. Our emphasis is on fun and participation and just making friends. And again, they do get that boarding school experience. They live in air conditioned dorms while they're at Macaulay take their meals in a, the Macaulay Dining Hall. And what they do when they're at Macaulay, they're placed on a team with other boys their same age. Typically nine and 10 year olds are together, 11 and 12 year olds, 13 and 14 year olds are together. Each age group is in a different dorm. There's four teams in each age group. So about 38 boys in each, uh, each age group, so nine on a team. And then they play each other in various sports. They play flag football, 
basketball, baseball, soccer. Uh, we play water polo. We play ultimate frisbee. We have a track meet, a swim meet, a tennis tournament. We do all these things. And the emphasis, though, is on fun. If they're really good in flag football, that's great. If they're really terrible in flag football, that's great. We really don't care what kind of athlete they are. The idea is just to have fun. A lot of times they get introduced to a sport that they've never played before, like a kid who gets to play uh, in a tennis tournament for the first time. We're also fortunate at McCall to have a, a beautiful indoor golf facility. So we're able to take the guys in there and play golf. So it's kind of uh, neat to see these kids getting introduced to sports that maybe they haven't tried before. We uh, have a, a, a cool way of uh, emphasizing and promoting sportsmanship at every game that's played, we do keep score. Uh, but the score is two to one. So if you lose in a football game 40 to nothing on the scorecard, it's still two to one. But we have a way that you can improve your score by sportsmanship. So you can get a plus one if you're really good sports or a minus one if you're not a good sport. So that's amazing how much they love each other at the end of a game when they're trying to get that plus one for their team. So it works pretty effectively. Um, so it's a great program. We also have off-campus trips. We go whitewater rafting. We play paintball, we take them to, uh, we're only a little over two hours from Atlanta, and we go to Atlanta, spend the day at Six Flags, and go see an Atlanta Braves baseball game. So each session of camp is 12 nights. So with everything I just mentioned, you can see it's an action pack. Go, go, go. Every moment of the day is scheduled out. So the boys, we found the key to success for boys is keeping them moving. So we like to uh, keep them involved and make sure that they're moving about and, and happy. And we have a lot of kids who come with their friends. That's great. We love it when they bring a bunch of boys with them who are their buddies and uh, they can all enjoy the camp experience. So last summer we did have camp. We moved forward. We put in a lot of different COVID protocols. If families are interested, they can go to uh, MacaulaySummerCamps.com is our website. And on the MacaulaySummerCamps.com website, you'll see our schedule and our total list of camps. You also see the COVID procedures that we had in place last summer. And I have to tell you, it's incredible. We didn't have any issues or any problems. We actually learned some things that we did under the COVID guidelines that we'll probably do this summer. Some of the little changes we made, some nuances that took place that really, I think, uh, were good. And we'll probably keep those in place. Hopefully this year, we won't have to do all the same things with temperature checks and keeping the boys in uh, such tight cohorts like we did. But our plan right now is to move forward. And I have to really brag about how great our counselors were last summer. Our counselors were on campus for seven straight weeks. They weren't allowed to leave. And even on their day off, they had to stay in the dorm. So they did a fabulous job for us last summer working with the guys. And uh, I think it's just a testimony to how great the kids are that come and work for us in the summer. So sports camp, like I said, is our flagship. The dates and so forth are listed on our website. As a matter of fact, it's so popular that our third session of camp is already full, has a wait list. And our first two sessions are not quite full yet, but they're getting there. So if anyone has an interest in sports camp, um, please uh, sign up sooner rather than later. And then we have a couple of other offerings for boarding camp this summer. We have the Macaulay Summer Academy, which is more of an academic program. And it'll have some uh, writing skills, some uh, test taking skills, some study skills and uh, math skills, those things will be highlighted in the Macaulay Summer Academy. And that again will be for boys who are rising, sports campus boys nine to 14, and the Summer Academy is gonna be for boys rising seventh and eighth grade boys. Uh, so anyone who's interested in that, there'll be more information on our website. And then we have another boarding camp, which will be at the end of the summer. We're very excited about, we're gonna have a, a rocketry camp. We have a SpaceX engineer on staff at Macaulay, and he's gonna be uh, operating our rocketry camp this summer. So we're very excited about that. That's something totally new. And we're fortunate we have state-of-the-art facilities. We have an incredible engineering and innovation lab at Macaulay. Um, you know, as an all boys school, math and science is a real point of emphasis for us. So we're fortunate to have a, a great facility like that as well. So, um, you know, these camps, the sports camp, like I said, is popular. We're we're very uh, happy to have these other offerings. And again, like it's been stated before, for folks who have an interest in boarding schools, it's a great way to introduce your, your child to the boarding school environment, seeing the dorms, getting to know the faculty. We have a lot of boys who come to our summer sports camp and other camps who end up becoming students at Macaulay. 
And it's a huge advantage for them to step on campus as a student that first day. And they already know a lot of the faculty. They already know some of the other guys that work in camp and some of the guys that went to camp with me. So yeah, it's a, it's a great opportunity for them. Thank you so much. That was great. Um, okay, now we have Pat from Wolfboro. Um, hi, everybody. Pat McInerney, Wolfboro Camp School. Um, one of the differences we have with everyone else is that we are just a five-week program. So all year long, we're focused on recruiting and working with the kids and the families about uh, making sure the five weeks with us is exactly what they need. And the major focus is because um, we are a school in the morning, an independent school, very much like the ones represented here. And actually the teachers that teach at Wolfboro are all from your schools. We have faculty from Berkshire, from Hotchkiss, from Miss Porters, from Mercesburg, you name it, from Cardigan Mountain. Um, our faculty um, know boarding schools because that's where they work year round. And they come to Wolfboro in the summertime. And they come to Wolf World because they have the opportunity to work with kids in very small classrooms. Um, each of our classes has four or five students and our classes are in the morning. So kids get up, we have breakfast, and then for the whole morning, it's like they're in prep school and they have classes. They have three classes. Then a fourth class is a free period where they go to summer reading because all of our kids have summer reading. So they get their summer reading done during the morning. And then the, the last class they have free is actually um, an opportunity for them to use their phone. And they only have to use the phone for 30 minutes a day. And so we, when you think of COVID, when you think of online learning, when you think of all the Zooms that we've all done this year, um, Wolfboro is the opposite of that. We have no technology. Our classrooms are tense. We have whiteboards, we have blackboards, we have no, you know, no, so, so in some ways, Wolfboro was made for today because every kid in the, in, in the country, every kid in the world has been over Zoomed and over technical. You know, it's just unbelievable. And so when you come to Wolfboro, we take your phone, we plug it in, we keep it in a place, you get to use it for half an hour. And the rest of the time, you're going to school in the morning and then the afternoon is a full summer camp. Um, the difference for us versus a lot of the other people on the call is that um, we are a camp. And so the kids are literally outside about 90 to 95% of the time. They live in tents. They have two, two kids to a, a tent. The classrooms are in tents. We have pavilions outside. So um, when they go to Cardigan or when they go to Macaulay, um, you, know, you have wonderful summer programs, but it is in a school setting. We are a camp, 100% camp. We're on the lake, uh, everything's outside. And so from that perspective, you know, we feel that um, each kid that comes to us is gonna have that camp experience, which we all know from our childhood and from everything else that, that that's a wonderful experience. Um, our classes are also different than the ones presented from the other schools. Um, our classes are very traditional. We do not offer robotics. We do not offer gel electrophoresis. We offer algebra one, two, algebra one, algebra two, English nine, et cetera. And so most of the kids that come to Wolfboro are looking for an academic boost. And so they come so that when they leave Wolfboro, wherever they're going next, whether it's you know, Macaulay, whether it's Chatham Hall, they'll be um, better prepared and be more successful when they get there. Unusual to most camps, Wolfboro doesn't have a lot of repeat takers because we kind of fix them. They go off to one of your schools and then they are successful as they go forward. And so um, Wolfboro, um, if you wanna get online, wolfboro.org, take a look at the website. There's lots of great pictures of the, the campus and the setting. Um, and I think that you'd find that, you know, we're a wonderful opportunity for kids that um, need an academic boost in the summertime. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pat. That was great. Um, and I love how everyone on the panel has a different kind of perspective of, of their summer program experience, but yet the most important piece of it is 
the sense of community. Um, and I think that's obviously a common denominator amongst all of your programs is, is just the importance of community and building relationships with these young people um, and giving them a positive um, experience that will also help them build character um, and serve them well um, throughout their future. So I really appreciate all of you guys um, taking your Tuesday, I was like a little day off on the days of the week this week, for whatever reason, it feels like Wednesday to me, but I know it's only Tuesday. So I appreciate your taking your Tuesday evening um, to spend some time with me um, and to help educate some of the families on the summer offerings that your um, organizations are providing. Um, is there anything, does anyone have anything else they want to share before we sign off? Uh, Pat looks like uh, who we refer to at Macaulay as Uncle Ted. I'm sorry. So you look like Uncle Ted. Oh. Ted, <laughs> Ted, uh, Ted Turner. Oh, thank you. Well, I wish I was <laughs> Ted Turner. He's, he's got a lot more money than I do. He's a, he's a Macaulay alum, and we re we refer to him as Uncle Ted. So. Oh, is he really? Uh, Great. Yeah. Good. Um, good. Um, well, thank you all um, for, for joining me tonight. I really appreciate your expertise. And um, we hope that everyone who tuned in um, was able to learn more about um, some of these summer programs. You know, in addition to these great summer programs, there are also a multitude of other programs out there. I would encourage you if you are considering um, looking into other programs to make sure that you um, you know, reach out to the program directors and, you know, ask your questions and talk about the schedule and security and things like that. Just really make sure that you've done your, um, your vetting of the different programs to make sure that it will be a positive experience for um, your student and your family. So um, this will be recorded and will be on our website um, the Boarding School 360 website um, probably tomorrow. Um, we do have a library of other recorded webinars um, that we have done over the course of the last several months. Um, one on interviewing tips, tips for essay writing. Um, we have a reflections from boarding school alumni, one on athletic recruiting, and then we also have one um, that just features junior boarding schools. Um, so we hope that you have found this beneficial. Obviously you can reach out to me um, if you have any questions or comments um, about you know, boarding school, about summer programs, anything like that, I'm, I'm happy to help. Um, and our information can be found on the um, Garrett Educational Consulting website as well as the Boarding School 360 website. So thank you, and I hope you guys have a wonderful evening, and I hope to see all of you in person soon. All right. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you Thanks so much. Have a great night. Okay. Good night. Good night.